and looked down upon us in disgust. I don't want any trouble. Let's get out. Can't stand, John. I feel sorry for your mother. What'd you say about my mama? Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 68. And Yah shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way, well, I spake unto thee, that thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. In Deuteronomy 28 and 68, Egypt is synonymous with oppression, slavery, captivity, and affliction. In scripture, Egypt is referred to as the house of bondage, the iron furnace, furnace of affliction. Egypt was the symbol of hard, severe bondage to the Hebrews. What this verse is saying is this. The children of Israel will go into an Egypt-like oppressive, powerful, severe slavery in ships. This is exactly how we got to the Americas. We were taken captive from the west coast of Africa and brought to the Americas in the bottom of slave ships. Once we arrived in the west, we were placed on an auction block and sold to the highest bidder. This process happened for over 300 years. This is a hysterical fact that can't be denied. Oh, now, see, we have come to it. Deuteronomy 28, verse 68 in the book of Deuteronomy is the last verse in this chapter and Yah just ties up everything that he has presented in this chapter of Deuteronomy 28 and he ends it by saying I'm going to send y'all into slavery if you are disobedient to me I'm going to send y'all into slavery in ships and you're going to be sold unto your enemies for male and female slave and no one will redeem you now that's what it means in Deuteronomy 28 68 when it says no one shall buy you that buy is talking about is, is speaking about redemption because because in the book of, Le of uh, Leviticus chapter 25, it states that if we are taken into captivity, that one of our next of kin can come and buy us out of that bondage, buy us out of that servitude. So Yah is breaking it down in Deuteronomy 28, 16. He said, listen, your next of kin, nobody is going to be able to buy you out of this condition. Because it is by the hand of Yah, because of our disobedience, because of our breaking of the covenant, that Yah has put us in this tragic situation. So we look to history. What other people? What other people? Let's just, let's just cut it off to the Western Hemisphere. What group of people in the Western Hemisphere, what other people other than the so-called blacks, have been brought here in the hulls of slave ships and sold on auction blocks as slaves? Isaiah chapter 51, verses 20. Thy sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all streets as a wild bull in a net. They are full of fury of Yah, the rebuke of your Almighty. Isaiah 51.20. The beautiful thing about this scripture is, uh, as it is broken down, the so-called African American would have no problem understanding how this particular scripture fits to him in his history. Uh, Isaiah 51 speaks about how a son have fainted. They lie at the head of all the streets as a wild bull in a net. Now let's really look at this. Y'all said our sons have fainted. What does it mean to faint? When you faint, that means that you fall unconscious. When you are unconscious, you have no idea of what's going on around you. You have no idea of what's taking place in your surroundings because you're unconscious. You have no conscience. So Yah is saying, your sons are unconscious. 
unconscious. They're spiritually unconscious. He said they lie at the head of all the streets. The head of all the streets today are referred to as So he's saying that your sons are at the, they have fallen unconscious and they're hanging on the corner so you can stop that. He says, as a wild bull in the net. A wild bull in the net, if you've ever seen a rodeo and you've seen when the man rides on the back of the bull, the bull starts bucking, that's called buck wild. You put a net on a wild bull, it's going to start bucking like that, it's going to start going buck, buck wild. So Father Yah broke this down and he would give it to you in your modern terminology. Israel, your sons are unconscious, spiritually unconscious. They have no idea what's going on around them. They're hanging on the corners as a wild bull in the net. In other words, going buck wild. When you go out into these corners, brothers and sisters, you understand that these corners are so dense, they're so wild, that you don't want to go walking past them, neither do you want to go riding past them. You go out on a hot summer night, it don't have to be hot, it can be cold. Winter, spring, summer, fall, they are out on the corners, packed from night and day. They don't have any idea of who they are. They have no idea about the covenant and they have no idea about Yah the Almighty they have no consciousness of Yah do y'all know who the children of Israel is? No. Y'all ever heard that? No. We ain't never seen that. I ain't into all that. Y'all ain't, y'all ain't, y'all ain't never read the Bible or nothing? Oh, yeah. the children of Israel? Remember when Moses went up on Mount Sinai? Yeah, that's what's up, though, sir. Y'all remember that? They can't even get y'all attention. You ain't got y'all. The women got y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was for Israel, not for us. And I can show you in Ephesians 2, 11, and 12 where it says that we wasn't even in that time. We wasn't there. That wasn't us. That wasn't us. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verses 43 through 44 And the stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high and thou shalt come down very low He shall lend to thee and thou shalt not lend to him He shall be the head and thou shalt be the tail the stranger in scripture always uh, referred to any other nation other than the children of Israel. In Deuteronomy 28, 43 and 44, it says, The stranger who sojourns among you, or who's in your community, you know, they will rise above you, and, you know, they will lend, and, you know, you will borrow, you'll have to go to them for your, uh, for your substance. And I myself, I can speak from experience because, you know, I did seven years in the United States military. I never had anything, no, nothing so much as a negative counseling statement and when I got out of the military I couldn't get a business loan to start my own business and as a matter of fact I got a $20,000 severance pay to get out of the military so I had that plus a business plan and everything and I still couldn't get it off the ground so you tell me does that mean that we're cursed or does that mean that I just didn't have my eyes dotted and my T's across I'd like to know well, why did you choose Harlem as a place to set up your, uh, your establishment here I'm Twenty years? No, but I mean, when you initially came over here, why did you choose Harlem? I like it. You like it here? Do you live in Harlem? No. You don't live in Harlem? Where do you live? I live in Long Island. You live in Long Island? So you said you had this store here for 20 years? You said business is pretty good? Why do you think business is good? Because people are friendly. People are friendly? So if you you think if you put this store in like Manhattan or something like that, you think you would do you think you would do just as good, or you think you don't think you'd do good in Manhattan as you would in, here in Harlem? You think you're better off here? Why? Because we like to spend money, don't we? Yeah, that's right. How you doing, there, buddy? Good. How are you, my man? I'm doing all right. JB's, my man. JB's. Can yeah. you can you state your uh, your name? My name is Tony. 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 Yes, sir. Did your name change when you arrived to America? No, it's still the same. It's still the same? Your name is Tony and uh... The